for the wise last words and don't hesitate to repeat the key messages <laughs> no I, 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 I will use my seven minutes I think not ten but seven <laughs> okay so let me just first uh, the first thing I would like to say is that it's very important that IMI has chosen diabetes for one of these specific uh, sessions because of the strong portfolio that IMI has on diabetes but most importantly, because of the extreme importance of diabetes, which in fact, I think is a health emergency. And uh, I think that that has come quite clear in this session. I mean, uh, from both the perspectives of the people with diabetes and the researchers and the clinicians that are involved in the treatment of, of uh, diabetes. Well, let me summarize a few things, a few messages. I mean, what has been very clear is that I think that this session has provided a much clearer understanding of what living with diabetes means and what it is. For both patients with type 1 diabetes, it's often a knowledge that type 1 diabetes is a difficult disease. Well, that's very clear. But people don't know how difficult it is. And then can said, well, diabetes is considered an easy disease. Type 2 diabetes, well, type 2 diabetes is not an easy disease. It's not an easy disease for patients, and definitely it's not an easy disease for us physicians to treat patients with diabetes. And the research in type 2 diabetes is extremely complex because, it, in fact, it's not just one disease. And, as, uh, and that's why Chantal said, well, I doubt that there may be a cure for type 2 diabetes because and my question was going to be, well, which type 2 diabetes, no? Exactly. So it's extremely complex for everyone. So that's one point that I think it was very, made very, very clear. Then uh, we need to change that perception. And in order to change that perception, that it's very pervasive because it's, some patients have that perception. Well, I don't have diabetes. I only have a little bit of sugar. And you go to the physician. Why do you say that? Well, because when I went to my physician, what he or she told me is that I didn't have diabetes, I only had a little bit of sugar. Well, that's how many of how many times have you often have you heard that? Well, that's really we have to change that. I mean, um, then um, and because this is a really well, the word that was has been used several times is a monster disease, and we know that it changes the life pattern, the complications. Uh, it, the, uh, it changes everything, and it's something that uh, people with diabetes live with every day of the year, and that was very clear here. So we need to be more vocal in putting diabetes on the first place of the unmet needs for research in, uh, in the world, in Europe in particular, because this is IMI. So IMI has been successful in having really a strong portfolio in diabetes, and we have had very nice examples of what has been achieved. And I'm not going to repeat that because obviously you did it much better than I could do that. So I'm, I don't need to summarize that. I would only encourage anyone to go to the website of all the different projects and see what has been achieved. It's magnificent. So it's, and then, and therefore, I would like to also mention, and this is something that maybe has not been very, very clear here, the importance of this public-private partnership, uh, the PPP in the often uh, quite unfriendly uh, EU jargon, no? <laughs> so this PPP is something that has been quite unique, and it has been able to bring together the academia, the researchers, and the industry in a partnership that uh, has never taken place before. And the opportunities that it offers are unique. And the examples of some of <clears throat> the, the achievements are very clear. I mean, uh, in terms of the resources, the infrastructure, putting together databases from uh, the clinical trials, uh, basis, uh, from the research institutions. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, I have seen the projects. I have attended some of the reviews of the project and have seen that progress. And therefore, it's something that really is very, very valuable. Then um, with these three 
those were my three points, the uniqueness of diabetes, the importance of diabetes. Remember, we cure 50% of cancers. We don't cure diabetes. That's an example. So, and then, and, and diabetes has an influence on all the other diseases. We then have the example of COVID here, but even with COVID, people with diabetes do worse than people that don't have diabetes. That's the same if they have a myocardial infarction, if they have a pneumonia, everything. So it's really a transversal disease and should not be diluted in all the other disease and needs specific approach. And with this, uh, my final comment is that I would encourage everyone to, re to really be vocal on defending that diabetes is an underfunded field in research. We need more money for research in diabetes. The unmet needs were very, very clear here. And as Chantal said, patient's voice is essential here. We, the researchers, we, the clinicians, need you in order to help us to convince the institutions that the funding for diabetes is crucial and essential, even for the survival, probably, of our health public system that currently spends more than 10% of the budget directly treating diabetes. In the future, that cannot be sustainable if we are, if we are not able to prevent diabetes, to better treat diabetes, to reduce the number of complications, and in the end, being able to cure diabetes as soon as possible and minimize the complications and all the other burdens or the other burdens that are associated with diabetes. And we also need to make the life of patients with diabetes easier than it is today. <laughs>